Just a quick glimpse at one of my rail buses. This one's kind of rough sounding, but it works compared to the other three. I'm thinking I might need to pull the gears out of the one of the other rail buses and um, see if I can take the two together and make one good smooth running rail bus. So this is um, one of the, there's like several rail buses here that I'm working on at one time. I got, this one says works, that's the one that makes noise. So I thought I could use some gears from one of the other ones. And I couldn't get this motor working. When I looked inside, I scratched away where the, um, all the corrosion or whatever, it's like this thing Looked like it was on fire, honestly. It was just seemed charred on the inside. But that that's the color it should look. Nice and shiny copper color. So the brushes on the motor will will um, uh, make good contact. And this is all the inside. Just nasty looking. So, anyway... Um, I pulled all the little pieces out. I like to save these pieces because you just never know when you need a little spring or brushes. These are, that's a, uh, what they call a pancake motor. So I saved those two little pancake motor uh, brushes right there in the center. Um, but I looked at this and the gears seem like they're in pretty good shape inside there so I think I'm going to see if I can take this the good motor out of here and see if it will run better inside this um, uh, truck here this motorized truck here our geared truck it'll be motorized when I move it over so anyway we'll give that a try and see what comes up so one of the buses was really loud and I decided maybe I should go in here and clean up the motor and I discovered that I've got two brushes but only one spring. So I'm wondering if one of the springs, whoops, magnet got my motor, one of the springs um, was missing all along and that's why the thing was running so rough. So, but... As you can see here, this is really dirty right here. So I'm going to clean that up, put the um, clean the brushes, put that one spring back in place. I have an extra spring that I got from a radio or from a slot car supplier. Put that in the motor and see if I can get this thing running smooth again. Oh, well, there it goes. Well, I got the motor working. Not doing too bad. It's still a little noisy. Maybe when it's on the high, high speed, maybe if I slow it down a little bit, it won't be so noisy like it was before. So this is the fourth rail bus motor. And, um... I have come to the conclusion that things, these things are just noisy. So every now and then you'll hear it get a little noisy on me. Now that I've kicked up the speed, you can hear the noise. So they all seem to do that. So, but I did manage to get this one working. It was listed as it started to run and then it started to smoke. So let me point out a few things I had to do with it. Okay, so um, inside here and here are the brushes for the motor. There's springs in that and these are connected down inside here. They're screwed here and here, and these are the two main contacts for the for the um, motor. Pulled this whole thing out of the chassis, loosened the screws, 
uh, pulled these away and popped the springs out and cleaned up the little brushes in there. So, and when you look in the side here, I'm not sure if we can get a good view of it. Um, there's the contact right here and it connects to the right side of the um, trolley motor. And then over here is the other contact, but it crosses. It's kind of insulated, kept away from that metal. It makes contact with metal over here. And that is what puts the, draws the power from this side. So I had to make sure I had those put back in the right place. So I will be putting this back together. See, it says started and it smokes. So it did start and then it stopped. But I will put this all back together uh, and we'll put it out on the track. And I'll just put all the rail buses out on the track at once and see if I can run all three simultaneously just spaced out on the, on the um, track. We'll see. But um, one motor was completely fried and... Um, I got this one going, and I've got the one in the Chicago, um, the green Chicago one, which is out on the track now. Um, got that one running. So three out of four um, rail buses I got running, and for five bucks, I'm pretty happy with with that uh, deal. Granted, I had to put a lot of time and work into it, but I have more time than money, so. For me, it works out in the end. As you can see, I've got three of the four rail buses running. And you'll see more as I continue on these projects and get them completed. Now that I have um, the rail buses running fairly well, I need to work on a few of the little details. I'm going to zoom in here. And <clears throat> this is the shell of one of the rail buses. And this is actually what's called the trolley. This is the rail bus. The trolley is actually this wire, this rod that connects to a wheel that runs off the overhead wire. So, um,. I've done some research on this and there's a few different ways these connect. Um, I'm going to try and make something a little more simple and almost generic, but um, I have ideas on how I can add some detail to it. But um, let me show you how I'm doing it. I can't show you myself actually doing it because the work is so tedious. I haven't got the patience for that. I've got this other rail bus here that um, I like this shell and it'll go on one of my other ones. So for the um, uh, top of the, for this part right here, I took some square styrene and drilled holes and put this little rod in as as an anchor to go inside that hole but I didn't look close enough and it ends up when I go like this this square rod at the top fits in there perfectly so I've yet I've decided haven't decided if I want to take and put another piece of this square rod coming down and let that anchor inside there or I could take and take a sleeve of styrene wrap it around there and glue that and hold that in place oh and to give you some perspective of how tiny these all these pieces are that's the top of the 
rail bus where it connects to the top of the rail bus. And this here is an HO scale rail joiner. So that kind of gives you an idea how if you thought these were small, that's even smaller. So then I have to have the um, rod that comes off the end here. So I looked at this, tried to find a nice balance on size. Um, I I didn't want to go this thin because I was afraid it would it would break. And I got to have a little wheelie thing on the end there. So what I have is this little styrene here and this big thing at the end this is actually when it's all dry is going to be trimmed down flush with this rod so it looks like a big wheelie thing there on the end and then this I will drill a hole in the end of the of that and this will mount right in there. Well, I think I've got it, the, the trolley arms uh, done for now. I might try and do something more with it, but that's got a lot of cool detail to it. But unfortunately, I can't reproduce that as well as I would like to. And this other trolley arm that I found to another trolley is actually smaller and simpler. And I just didn't know what to do. So this is what I came up with finally. Um, I did replace this vertical piece with the same size as that square. Drilled the hole in there to put that in at an angle. These are thin. This is a thin rod going through a thicker rod and slides right in there. And that's the top of my trolley. Um, I did uh, glue that little piece on the top to give it some dimension. I might actually add a little something down here before they're painted. But each one is different as far as that angle. Um, when you're doing things by hand, this tiny, it's kind of hard to make them consistent but there we go I've done just about everything possible to get these things running and in, back in shape and this one right here is probably the best well I shouldn't say probably as I know it is the best running trolley of uh, trolley rail bus of everything I have um, I received a message just the other day that one of my rail fan brothers is interested in one of my rail buses and I chose to, to give him this one. This will be the one that he will be receiving. Um, uh, the, this was the only intact trolley rod that I had and um, so I put it on this one. Uh, the people that you can see inside through the screen that was, uh, I had to clean that all up. And the paint, this was originally cast in red, as you can see down here. Whoever painted it before, they had, uh, I could probably see where I could touch up this paint job a little better still. But um, they uh, painted it with a brush and it, the, it looked a little uh, milky yellow. Let's see if I can show you the contrast between the two. If you can, I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up. This is yellowed, and I have three of them, three shells. So this was the best of the three shells. 
So I cleaned it up. It's got a driver on it. It's also got, uh, what does that say on there? I believe it says 6th Street, number 3127 30, West 6th Street. So that one I'm passing along. This was just a shell that I uh, bought for a couple bucks at a train show. And it was an empty shell, so I had to take the people out of one of those other uh, shells. Um, this one does have a driver, that looks good. And you can kind of see the people a little better through there. So um, this one runs pretty good. They still are a little noisy like they were before, but um, the one thing is, is that they have, uh, once they get up to speed, they sound smoother and quieter. And then I have the last one. This was the Chicago Transit Authority. But that's the three trolleys and trolley rail buses, and we're going to get those out on the track so you can see how they're going.